Listen to the scripture. It'll blow your mind. And it came to pass after these things that one told Joseph, Behold, thy father is sick. Your dad's dying, Joseph. And he took with him his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. And one told Jacob and said, Behold, thy son Joseph is coming unto thee. And listen, the news of Joseph coming, the coat of many colors, the dreamer, the one that had been sold by his brothers, the one that they had said he was dead. I mean, you talk about a lifetime. And Jacob said to his brother, uh, and, and, and go back to verse 2, And one told Jacob, when they told Jacob, and said, Behold, thy son comes unto thee, and Israel strengthened himself and sat up in his bed. Just the news that Jacob was coming gave life to this old dying man. Listen to this. And Jacob said unto Joseph, God Almighty appeared unto me at Luz in the land of Canaan and blessed me. And he said unto me, Behold, I will make you fruitful and multiply thee. And I will make of thee a multitude of people, and I will give this land to thy seed after thee for an everlasting possession. If you wonder where Israel belongs, Israel's, Israel was the redeemed name of Jacob. So when God gave Jacob the name Israel, and then he said to him, This land is your land forevermore, there's no point in arguing as to who Jerusalem belongs to. And where the land of Israel belongs to. Here's God giving it. No other authority higher than God saying to Jacob, I'm going to give you this land for thy seed after thee for an everlasting possession. And now thy two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, which were born unto thee, where? In the land of Egypt. His boys were born in the place where he'd been put in prison. And accused of rape. And accused of all the different things. The pains and sorrows. And he had to stay faithful for years in that prison cell. The darkest points of his life were in Egypt. And yet born to him in the pain. And in the rejection. And in the betrayal of his brother selling him. He had two boys born. Now you know that Jacob has older brothers. You know that he has... He is way behind in the lineage of getting the blessing. But yet when Israel is dying, Jacob comes, I mean, Joseph comes to him with his sons. Now listen to this. This is crazy. And, uh, uh, and thy two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, which were born unto thee in the land of Egypt, before I came unto thee, un, into Egypt, are mine as Reuben and Simeon, they shall be mine. And thy issue, which thou begettest after them, shall be thine, and shall be called after the name of their brethren in the inheritance. And as for me, when I come from, come from Paddan, Rachel died with me in the land of Canaan, in the way. When yet there was very little way to come unto Ephrath. Now Ephrath is, is, is Bethlehem. I buried her on the way, on the way to Bethlehem. And Israel beheld Joseph's sons and said, Who are these? This is the first time that he's meeting his grandsons. He didn't know who they were. He says, Who are these? And Joseph said unto his father, These are my sons whom God hath given me in this place. And he said, Bring them, I pray unto, thee, unto me, and I will bless them. Now the eyes of Israel were dim for age, so he could not see, and he brought them near unto him and kissed them and embraced them. This is, this is a huge moment. Israel has inherited the blessings of Abraham. And he's about to transfer the greatest single blessing. This is bigger than Bill Gates. This is bigger than anyone else in the world that's ever been before or since. This is the Abrahamic blessing. This is the covenant with God himself. And God is choosing two boys to be presented to him. And listen to what happened. Now the eyes of Israel were dim for age. He could not see. And he brought them near unto him and kissed them and embraced them. And Israel said unto Joseph, I had not thought to see thy face. And lo, God has showed me also thy seed. He had given up ever finding his boy again. 
And yet God was faithful, not just to bring his son back to him, but he was bringing his grandsons back. I've got news for you. I don't care where you've been. I don't care if you've lived in the land of Egypt. I don't care if you've been in prison or you've been sold down the river by, by family. I don't care if you know the sting of betrayal. I, whatever you come from, whatever Egypt you found yourself in, I've got news for you. It's time for the blessing to be transferred Amen. onto you in the name of Jesus. All the stuff that the devil has piled against you cannot break the lineage of who you are in God. When that prodigal son was in a pig pen, wanting to feed himself on pig food, he was still a son of the prodigal father. And the father was waiting for him to come back. I've got news for you. What you went through up to now doesn't count. The blessing is on its way into your life. Now listen to this. And Israel, uh, verse 12, And Joseph brought them out from between his knees, his two boys, and he bowed himself. This is a big deal. This is big stuff. And he bowed himself with his faith to the earth. And Joseph took them, Ephraim in his right hand, toward Israel's left hand. And Manasseh in his left hand, toward Israel's right hand. The blessing came from the right hand. So when you put your right hand on someone, you, you are giving them the, bless, the, the main blessing. So understand, so, so now... Israel is bringing his two sons towards his father and he is presenting them towards his dad as he thinks the blessing will be dispersed. So he's, he has got um, Ephraim is on the left, in the left hand and Manasseh is the one that's getting the main blessing because he's the oldest. And brought them near unto him, verse 14. And Israel stretched out his right hand and laid it on Ephraim's head, who was the younger. Mm -hmm. And then he took his left hand and he put it on Manasseh's head, guiding his hand wittingly, for Manasseh was the firstborn. So here we have the younger son now under his right hand, the blessing hand, and the left hand being on the one that deserves it. Listen to me. Your blessing and your inheritance doesn't come because you're in line for it or you deserve it. The blessing that you get from God is because He has chosen to give it to you. A king doesn't have to make Amen. an excuse for blessing. A king just gives because that's what a king can do. And He blessed mm -hmm. Joseph. And, and, he's, and, and said, God, before whom my father Abraham and Isaac did walk, the God which fed me all life long unto this day, the angel which redeemed me from all evil, bless this lads. And let, the name be, let my name be upon them, and the name of my father Abraham and Isaac. And let them, be, let them grow into a multitude in the midst of, midst of the earth. And when Joseph saw that his father laid his right hand on the head of Ephraim, it displeased him. And he tried to he held up his father's hand to remove it back to Manasseh's head. And Joseph said to his father, No, not so, my father, for this is the firstborn. Put his hand on his head. And his father refused and said, I know it, my son. I know it. He shall also become a people and he shall also be great. But truly this younger brother shall be greater than he and his seed shall become a multitude of nations. And I was, I was getting ready to come on this program today and the Holy Ghost spoke to me as clearly as he ever has. And he told me to tell you that God's hands have been crossed and you are going to get the choice blessing. The one that you don't deserve. The one that you're not in line for. The one that you never asked for. The thing that you, that, you know, I'll never get this. But God has chosen you. And he is crossing his hands. And I know Pastor Amen. Tony, there are folk watching today. I can <laughs> feel it in my bones. That are saying, oh my God, does that mean there's, there's space for me in this blessing? Philip, Philip Cameron, what you've just done is gave people hope. Um, you know, the, I, I was thinking while you were saying that, that the blessing is coming upon the second son. Um, 
And if you remember, it was what the first Adam got us into, the second Adam got us out of. That's right. And so the blessing is on the second son. And there are sons and daughters of God who feel like they've been uh, forgotten right right now. There's people that yeah. feel like, um, you know, they're not good enough. and Left behind. And, um, you know, <laughs> may, left behind. But but the blessing was is when God crosses his hands. Ah. And that's what God is doing. And I think that he's raising up people who feel uh, forgotten and, and frank to be frank with you i feel like he's raising up people that have have actually been uh made to feel uh, left out and Absolutely. made to feel like that their gift is no is not useful any, anymore I, I i've been dealing with that i had a gentleman speaking with with a sunday and um years ago years ago i went through a tragic divorce it wasn't his fault but yet He's, he felt crippled from then on, as if his gift wasn't powerful anymore, and as wow. if God couldn't use him anymore. And we were able to speak hope and blessing. And today, um, while the church didn't recognize it and raise him back up, yeah. Disney World did. They oh, seen his gift. They seen his talent. Yeah. Sitting in a church one day, and they said, we want that guy to work for us. He's a genius in creativity. And and I'm telling you that the church, if they're not careful, they will overlook the second son.